Hey sixth graders, it's Mrs. Yagel and Mrs. Ressler asked me to talk to you a little bit about something called cartouches. And you might be thinking, Mrs. Yagel, either I already know what that is or I have no idea what you're talking about. But don't worry, I'm going to share it with you. So the first thing is that we need to think about the written language of the Egyptians. And I know you know that they're called hieroglyphics. They were invented in about 3250 BC, so it's been around for a really long time. And the fascinating thing about hieroglyphics is that they are symbols that represent lots of different things. So they both represent letters and objects. So this is different than Chinese language where all of the little characters represent just objects. So in ancient Egypt, it was a mix of both of them. So here are some examples of hieroglyphics. Over here, you can see how these are representing letters and these are the symbols that go with it. This column here is uh, showing you what this picture actually is because obviously sometimes in old art, it's hard to figure out what is what. This right here is what's called the Rosetta Stone and this is a pretty cool tidbit because this is how we understood what Egyptian hieroglyphics were in the first place. Um, French um, discoverers found this and it's actually the exact same message written in three different languages. And so there's hieroglyphics, there's a uh, de demonic Greek, and then there's ancient Greek. And so they were able to convert the ancient Greek into this language and then into the hieroglyphics and realize what it said in both of them. It was basically just a decree, like a law. Here it is closer up. So you can actually see the hieroglyphics here and the different language written here. And then this is the ancient Greek at the bottom. So now you're going to have to use your detective skills, just like any good paleontologist would. And I want you to think about the written language and what do you think these might be? So if Mrs. Ressler wants to pause the video now, she could, and you guys could share a little bit about predictions of what you think these might actually be. Okay. Did you make some predictions? These are some up close versions of it. Here's that exact same symbol that we saw, only it's in a big mural. Here are some more, and they're next to this statue. Uh oh. And here, this one is like up close with art. And if you could see, uh, around the ring here are more hieroglyphs. And so it's almost like there's a message around it, as well as in the middle. Any ideas what this is? Hmm. What if I showed you these pictures and told you that these pictures kind of are like the same thing that you just saw? Beanie Baby Tag? How about these? What are those? What's this? So why would I show you these pictures if I want you to figure out what a cartouche is? Because that's what those other emblems were. It's because a cartouche is an ancient Egyptian name tag. And that's what you'll be making today with Mrs. Ressler. So the first thing that you will do is actually put your name here. And then Egyptians often wrote messages around the edges of the cartouche. This was how they preserved their namesake when they died. So I know that you know that they were buried and mummified and they had all the things they needed with them in the afterlife. And one of those things they believed they needed was a solid representation of their name. Because in ancient Egypt, if you lost your name, you didn't exist anymore. So, you, here are some other examples of Egyptian pharaohs. And you'll be making one just like this. Um, with your name, they're written from top to bottom and from left to right. So if you have a super long name, you'll have to put like your first name and then your middle name and your last name. And then around the edges in the rope, often they wrote good wishes or positive vibes for the afterlife. So good luck, and I cannot wait to see your cartouches when they're done. See you later.